So exploring probability. So when this topic was probably first being explored, it would have been done using experimental probability. Right, so experimental probability. And that involves carrying out an experiment, it involves doing something, like throwing a die or a dice, you know, six-sided, six-sided dice. When, we, when I talk about dice, um, I might use the word whether it's singular or plural, right, so I don't have to go from die to dice and that. And when I talk about dice, I'm talking about a six-sided dice, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. The standard dice, you know, your Monopoly or your board games, okay? Not the 20-sided dice and, and that. You can have four-sided dice and 20-sided dice and so on, all of which line up with the platonic solids, but um, talk about dice. And so, somewhere here, I have something on, no, wait, it's here. And here. Here, it's throwing dice, an experiment. So, if I throw one die 20 times, then what's the, what's the chance of getting a six? Or if I throw a die, what's the chance of getting a six? One out of six, right? Because one of the outcomes. So if I throw 20 times, then how many times should I see each of one, two, three, four, five, six, at least around? Well, let's throw the dice. Hey, no fives in 20 throws. It's a chance. Let's throw them again. Oh, that time, no sixes. 20 throws. Oh, there we got at least one of each here. What should those bars be? Where should they be? In other words, should they all be different heights? Should the ones be like way up high and the sixes down low? Where should they be? They should be around the same. They should be around the same. So what do we got to do to make them around the same? I think we have to do it more times, right? So what if we go 100 times? Throw the dice still a little low. Let's throw them again. Uh, a little closer, right? You see that these are giving you the percentages of them. Let's throw them again. What should we do if we want to get them more all the same? Throw more times. So the more we throw, you can see that, hey, now they're starting to even out a bit, right? That they all should be around one-sixth of the time. One-sixth as a percentage is like 16, 17%. Okay. That doesn't mean that we don't get ones that are low. What should we do if we really want to get them? We should throw it more times still, right? Which we can't do with this thing. So, because it only goes to 250. Okay. What if there's two dice? What are the possible outcomes when I throw two dice? And I'm talking about the sum. So what's the sum? Of, throw two dice, what can you get? Uh, well, you can get a 12. And you most likely said it. Most, most likely seven. What's, what else? Can, what's the lowest sum that you can get? Two. two. So you can get anything from two to twelve, and Rob say most likely seven. Okay. So let's take a look. We throw. Now, if we're throwing ten times, we don't really expect to see. You know, I mean, if you throw ten times, can you get all of the possible sums? Okay. You can't get a one. Right. So that's out. So what do we have to do if we want to see what this is really going to look like? We need to throw more times, right? And look, most likely seven. Okay, was well, that always? No, there's sixes and eights, seven and eights. What should we do though? Throw more times, right? Most likely seven. So does that distribution kind of make sense that we should get more in the middle and less on the ends? Good. How many ways are there of getting a 12? There's one way, right? What do you have to get? You have to get a six on both dice, right? And we know that the chance of getting a six is one out of six. <coughs> Okay, so if we want to, let me just pause this while I flip around. Dice theory. Uh, single dice. So here's the sum of two dice, right? The sum of two dice. You can get a two. The only way you get a two is, oh, wait. I, put that in. I, I never have watched these things anyway. So you get a two. The only way to get a two is to get a one and a one. The only way to get a 12 is a 6 and a 6, but a 7 you can get a lot of different ways, right? You can get a 1 and a 6, or a 2 and a 5, or a 3 and a 4, or a 4 and a 3, or, and so on, right? 
So six of the outcomes. There's 36 possible outcomes. And I think somewhere down here there's a little chart. Which I might be able to get to. Like. Yeah, here's a little chart here, right? So it shows you different dice, right? Like we have a red die and we have a green one and you can get a one and a one on each of them. So that's a sum of two. Right? That's how you get a two. This is how you get a 12. There's two ways to get an 11. There's three ways to get a 10. There's four ways to get a nine. There's five ways to get an eight. Six ways to get a seven. And then you just start counting down again, right? And we can go back up and look at these. Put that out. Right, so there's six ways to get a seven. There's 36 possible outcomes. You could do that with a tree if you wanted, right? You could say one, two, three, that's too much. So you do fundamental counting principle, right? First die, how many outcomes are there for the first die? Oops. Six, how many outcomes for the second one? Six. I almost said that like a factorial. Six, six, 36. Six, it's really 720. <laughs> So, 6 times 6, right? You can't go 6P2 or anything like that, right? Because we're not doing arrangements of different objects. We're really taking the same thing. Anytime you're repeating something, it's not a permutation, right? Now, we do have permutations with repetitions that we handle. But that's a different idea. But when you're repeating letters on a license plate or something, then you're not using that as a permutation. You're just going, how many ways, how many ways? So experimentally, we, we threw them, but then there's something. So in an experimental probability, the probability is defined as equals, I don't know, the number of favorable outcomes over the total number of outcomes. which we'll often just say it's favorable over total. So we're talking about the die, right? What's the probability of getting a two? Well, there's one two out of six faces on the die. The probability is one out of six. That type of probability, where we just examine, where we look at that chart of dice, that's called a theoretical probability. So experimental means we carried out that experiment, right? We use the simulator. Wrong one. We use the simulator and we tossed the dice. See, so throwing dice experiment. Uh, you know, throw the dice. Okay, and do they come out the exact same number of times? No, right? Experimentally, no. Uh, theoretically, we look at it and we say, hey, the probability of any one of these particular outcomes is one out of six. When we throw two dice, you know, do they come out exactly in the distribution that they should? Hard to tell here, right? Probably not, because that, but theoretically, we know that six times out of 36 times, right? That goes back. Go back. Six times out of 36 times, you should be getting a sum of seven, which is about 17%. Probability is six out of 36 or one out of six. Right? And we can reduce these, right? So some of you might want to say that's one out of six. This is one out of nine. This is one out of 12. This is one out of 18. The problem with doing that is it makes them hard to compare. Right. When you say one out of six, and you say five out of thirty-six, it's like, well, which you know, I don't know. So leaving them all with a common denominator of thirty-six makes it much easier to compare different probabilities, right? Or to compare the probabilities because you've got different uh, different numbers. But answers are usually expressed in a reduced form, right? Or as a percentage, uh, they can be rounded off. 
All right, that's probability. There's some stuff in 3.1. Here are the key ideas. Knowing the probability of an event is useful when you're making decisions. Experimental probability is represented as you know, law and theoretical probability. And basically, it just comes down to favorable over total. Right? The number of times that what I wanted to have happen happened divided by the total number of outcomes. Sometimes we need to list the outcomes, which means we need to do the sample space. Do you remember when we did one of the sample spaces? The other, you did tree diagram, we did the sample space for something, I can't remember what. I can't remember when, but I know we did a tree diagram, we did a sample space. That's listing all of the outcomes. And then you go through and you need to count. Well, how many of them are favorable? How many match up with what I need? And, how, and the total. An experimental probability, okay, let me ask you this. How many of you are in a family of three children? Okay, so hand up. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. How many of those have exactly two boys? One. So one out of six. So experimentally, I say the probability of having two boys in a family that has three children is one out of six. Now, do you believe that that's the real probability? No. Because you know other families and you know, hey, that happens, does that happen more often or less often than one out of six? Yeah, think about it, you know people that have, you know, it's that way, so yeah, I know a number of families. How many of those are two boys and two boys and one girl? All the same. I know a lot of like all boys. A lot of all boy families? So how many of you six? How many are all one uh, one sex? So three boys. Everybody else? Be two girls and a boy, right? Because you didn't put your hand up for two boys and a girl. We get three boys. Nobody said, oh, girls. You're either lying to me or we've got that. So we say one out of six is they're all boys, and one out of six is. But, you know, how many people are we surveying here, right? Not that many. So I would need to, you know, okay, I'm going to pause this. I'll go next door and ask them, and then I'll go over there and we'll count, right? What do we need to do? If you're going to do an experimental, you need to collect a lot of data if you want to match real life. Okay? So real life, if we do want to figure out what's the probability of getting two boys and a girl in a family of three, well, we need to list the outcomes, right? So first, second, third. First of all, how many outcomes are there? So three girls, three boys, two of one, one of the other, and two of one, one of the other. So there are there four outcomes? Yes. Okay. But what does count, fundamental counting principle? The first trial, how many ways are there getting the first trial? Two. How many ways are there getting the second trial? Two. How many ways are getting the third trial? Two. How many possible outcomes? Really? We started with three little numbers? <coughs> yeah, we multiply, right? Because it's remember it's an and probability, right? It's boy and boy and boy, right? And probability is we multiply or, or sorry, and when we count, and means we multiply or means that we add. Okay, so the first child could be what? The first child's a boy, what can the second child be? First child's a girl, what can the second child be? First child's a boy, second child's a boy, what can the third child be? And so on, right? Do we have four outcomes here? Okay, how many outcomes? We know those. But count them. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, there are eight up, which matches up what we know, right? Two, two, two. Fundamental kind of principle, two times two times two, right? You can't do like two P three or something like that. Or see, two P three makes absolutely no sense. You can't have a larger number after. It's got to be a smaller number or the same. Okay, how many of those? What is the theoretical probability of having two boys and one girl? Out of? What's the theoretical probability 
for having two boys and a girl? Three out of eight. Three out of eight. Yeah. Okay. What's the theoretical probability of having all boys? One out of eight. Yeah. Right? There's one outcome that has three boys. Okay, now, what does this rely upon? It, it, it has to be that the chance of having a boy or a girl is 50-50. Is that in fact true? It's pretty close. It's pretty Not close. Quite. Yeah. It's actually biased a little bit more towards girls. Really? Girls are more likely. No, I don't think so. Uh, the world population is just too... Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, but, but we're talking about births. I know, but, but that's kind of impossible to determine. Really, uh, no, the birth is actually easy to determine. You can tell, right? I mean, they come out, they're yeah, one or the other. I, I, that's <laughs> I, I don't know. I think, <laughs> I think it's slightly more male. I heard in bio class of this year that the X chromosome is more likely to win slightly. Really? That, 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 okay. That, I don't know. I look at it. I, I just, I, I've heard, and maybe this isn't true. I think it's slightly more males just because nature knows that males are stupider and tend to kill themselves off, so that you know, we need to create a few more of them just to balance things out later in life, right? But who knows? <laughs> we, we could look this up. Um, this is the sample space though, right? You cannot answer any of these questions without the sample space. Right? Two boys and a girl. Because when we first looked at it, we said, well, there's four outcomes, right? It's like all boys, all girls, or two, one, and one, or the other, and two, one, one, or the other. That's four possible outcomes. But they don't occur equally likely, right? Some of them are one out of eight, these guys, and the other ones are three out of eight. Okay? So, this is a theoretical probability, right? Experimentally, we would have walked around to different classes, collected the data, could have had you out in the halls or in class breaks asking people, you know, how many children in your family and how many boys, how many girls. We could have done this for different families as well, right? Collected that data. The more we collect, the more likely we are to get to these numbers, right? So the more experiments you do, if you're doing experimental, some things can only be done experimentally, right? I drop a coffee cup, how can it land? Yeah, okay, assuming it's a Starbucks cup, so it's not going to break. Yeah, the coffee's good, and it's empty, so that we don't have to clean up a mess. Drop a coffee cup, how can it land? Yeah, there's three possibilities, right? Can land face up, right? It can land upside down, or it can land on its side. <laughs> now, how's it going to land? So three, three ways. Which is more likely? Which is most likely to happen? Do you have experience with this? On its side. You ever drop one where it just boom? You ever drop a full one where it boom and it just lands and you know sticks the landing and nothing happens? No. No. Right. It doesn't happen that, but it happens, right? Even if it's empty, how many times does it just land like that, right? So we know. So the, we can't do that theoretically, right? Because we don't know. With boys and girls, we know. Yeah, it's 50-50, right? So we know that these are equally likely outcomes, right? Each of these guys. So with the coffee cup, we'd have to conduct an experiment, right? We'd have a little arm, we'd have a little chart, put the cup there. You know, it knocks it off, and we just count how many out of a thousand times we did it. It landed this many times up, this many times, you know, upside down, this many times on its side. So some things can only be done with a theoretical probability, right? You have to conduct an experiment. Okay, so need to know. An event is a collection of outcomes that satisfy a specific condition. For example, when throwing a standard die, the event throw an odd number is a collection of the outcomes one, three, and five. Right? Throwing a seven is a collection of the outcomes, throw a seven. Probability of an event can range from zero, impossible, to one, certain. Okay, you can't be over one. If you're ever working on a probability that's greater than one, the odds are you're gonna get that question wrong. Okay, you have a you have a hundred percent chance of getting the question wrong if you say the probability is greater than one. Right, so it's between zero and one. You might be able to give 110%, but there's no 110% probabilities, right? So you can express probability as a fraction. Most likely, a lot of times we'll do it as fractions, and then they get reduced in the end. You can do it as a decimal, which is just take the top and divide it by the bottom, right? Just actually do the fraction. If it says one out of three, go one divided by three out of eight, go three divided by eight, you get 0 0.375. And as a percent, in which case you just kick the decimal over two places and your 0.375 becomes 37.5. A lot of times we do it as a percent because it makes sense to us, right? We know that out of 100, right? Percent simply means out of 100, right? 
Um, you can use theoretical probability to determine the likelihood an event will happen. Can we do theoretical probability with cards? Deck cards? Can you do a theoretical probability? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Dice? Yeah. Coins? As long as the coin is a fair coin, the dice are fair dice, they're not weighted or anything. You go to a casino, the dice are clear, right? so that you can see if, if anything. You can't enclose them in your hand. They don't like that if you do that, right? because that means you could be changing out a die. So they must always be visible, and they are clear so that they can see through them, so they know they're not weighted, So because they want it to be a fair game. They're going to win anyways, but they want it to be a fair game. All right, next. 3.2, uh, odds. So you've heard of odds as well, right? So there's probability, which we just discussed, and there are odds, and how do I make this bigger? Zoom. Fit with. Huh. Uh, explore. An oil and vinegar salad is made using two parts oil to one part vinegar, so the ratio, remember ratios? Right, I'm sure you did that in junior high. Because I'm pretty sure we didn't do that in high school. Odds in favor. So we talk about odds. Odds in favor, and we talk about odds against, right? So when you talk about odds, there's two different ways. Odds in favor, the ratio of the probability that an event will occur to the probability the, that the event will not occur, or the ratio, more likely, is the ratio of the number of favorable outcomes to the number of unfavorable outcomes. So when we said the probability of getting a, a 7 is 6 out of 36, or 1 out of 6, or really the probability of getting a 3, roll 1 die, get a 3. We say the probability is 1 out of 6. The odds are in favor of getting a 3 are 1, 2, how many? 5, right? Because the outcomes, number of favorable outcomes is 1, and the number of unfavorable outcomes. So whereas probability is favorable over total, odds 4 are favorable to unfavorable. Odds against are unfavorable to favorable. Okay, so the odds against, right? So you always hear about the odds. Right? Anybody watch the Kentucky Derby? Right, they're always giving the odds over the horses, right? And the odds change right up until post time, right? Because there's betting, and depending on the amount of money bet, that changes the odds. Come on. Is there more? Oh, page navigation. Next page. Okay. So I'm just bringing this up because they draw better than I do. So determine the odds. Bailey holds all the hearts from a standard deck of 52 cards. How many hearts are there? <laughs> They're all there. Okay. Start counting. How many hearts are there? You should know this. Yeah. Well, say it. Thirteen. Thank you. He asked Morgan to choose a single card without looking. Determine the odds in favor of Morgan choosing a face card. How many face cards are there? So that's favorable, right? There are three face cards. How many unfavorable cards are there? Yeah, ten. So the odds... Uh, in favor of choosing a face card are 3 to 10. What's the probability of choosing a face card? What's the probability? 3 out of 13. Okay, so 3 out of 13, right? Because it's favorable, there's 3 over total. There's a total of 13. Okay, and then of course they go into all this uh, set theory stuff. And, you know, so let H be the universal set of all hearts. So there's the set of hearts, and C is the set of face cards that are hearts. So there's the jack and the queen and the king. And C prime is the set of unfavorable, right? So what this person is doing is they're setting it up. I don't do that. They're setting it up as two sets, right? So here's the sample space, right? Here's everything that can happen. And here are my favorable. And then here are the unfavorable. Now, usually it's pretty easy, right? Because you just have to subtract favorable from total to get unfavorable, right? Because 
the either one or the other can't be both. Okay, and then they run through. Oops, what the heck did I do there? Can I scroll through this? Oh, now it's just moving. Where's my scroll bar? View. Um, navigation pane. Open the book then in front of you. All right, I got nothing here. Oh wait, now we're good. Okay, odds in favor three to ten. What are the odds against? <laughs> ten to ten to three, right? So odds in favor, odds against. You just turn them around. Determining the odds from a probability. Research shows that the probability of an expectant mother selected at random having twins is 1 out of 32. Does that seem high to you or low? That sounds pretty likely. I don't know. Uh, I mean, I have no idea. I guess we, you know, we could Google it and say, hey, what's the probability of having twins? What are the odds in favor of an expectant mother having twins? So what's the favorable? So the odds here. Favorable is? One. Unfavorable is? 31. How'd you get the 31? Yeah, there's 32 in total, right? In other words, out of every 32 expected mothers, we expect one, which means that we have 31 that aren't. It's favorable to unfavorable. Is that triplets and stuff? Nope. Just twins. I'm assuming this is just twins. Because it, otherwise it would have said multiple births. Yeah. Multiple births would then be twins, triplets, you know, and so on. What are the odds against an expectant mother having twins? 31 to 1. What do those two numbers have to add up to? 32. They always add up to the total, right? So if you get a probability, right, this is total. This is favorable. Now, favorable doesn't mean good or bad, right? Favorable is just the thing we want to happen. So don't think, oh, favorable is always a good thing, right? Because in English, you know, a lot of times when we use favorable, that's, oh, that's a good thing. Okay. Favorable is simply the thing we want to happen. And unfavorable is the thing we don't want to happen, right? Or that we don't want to count. Okay, questions on that? Pretty straightforward, right? And they give you Leslie's solution, and you know, you can read through this stuff, and it's kind of nice because, you know, I wrote the odds, and this is how I calculated it, and stuff like that. So that if you want to, uh... now let's do the your turn. Suppose that the probability event happening is 2 out of 5. What are the odds in favor? What are the odds against? What do they have to add up to? Okay, so they have to add up to the total number, right? So remember, probability, favorable over total. So I want odds. I take the favorable. I put it to total minus favorable, right, and the rest are unfavorable. <coughs> okay, what if we want to get a probability and we have the odds? Really? Right. Computer randomly selects a university student's name from the university database to award a $100 gift certificate for the bookstore. The odds against the student being uh, so the odds against the student being the odds against the selected student being male are 57 to 43. Determine the probability that the randomly selected university student will be male. So, what are they? 43 over 100. Okay, how do we get that? Yeah. So odds against mean that the the males are on the right side, right? Odds in favor, they're on the left side, right? 
So then these are the females. And the 100 is 57 plus 43, right? To get, the pro to get the total, you have to add these two together to get the total. Okay? Pretty straightforward, huh? And, you know, here it is, right? So. Suppose the odds in favor of an event are 5 to 3. Is the probability the, en the event will happen greater than or less than 50%? So what is the... So we don't, to answer this, we're going to say, well, what is the probability? Five, 5 out of 8. Is that greater than 50%? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. How do we get that? You go 5 divided by 8. 0 0.625, right? Or you can say, yeah, hey, 4 out of 8 is 50%. So, you know, you'll often hear the odds expressed as, so what are the odds of getting ahead? You flip a coin, what are the odds of getting ahead? Oh, 1 and 2. No. Oh. 50%. So how many heads are there? What's favorable? 1. Okay, how many non-heads are there? 1. Oh, 1. So what are the odds? 1 to 1. Do you ever hear odds expressed as 1 to 1? Usually they'll say what? 50 50. Yeah. Right? So when we started having this discussion earlier, earlier in the day, so what are the odds of getting ahead, right? And so everybody immediately 1 to 2. Well, 1 to 2 is the probability, right? 1 over 2. So the odds are 1 to 1. You never hear that in real life, right? You say, if I said, because earlier today, so what's the chance of getting ahead? Right? Somebody said 50 50. That's how we say, when the odds are 1 to 1, we express it as 50 50, usually. Okay? Doesn't mean you won't see it written as 1 to 1, but. Making a decision based on odds and probability. Hockey game ended in a tie after a five minute overtime period, so the winner will be decided by a shootout. Coach must decide whether Ellen or Brittany should go first in the shootout. The coach would prefer to use her best scorer first, so she will base her decision on the player's shootout records. So who are you gonna use, Ellen or Brittany? So if we want to base it on their records, then how are we going to compare Ellen to Brittany? Yeah, the odds of that scoring. Okay. So the odds of Ellen scoring. So Ellen odds. What are the odds of Ellen scoring? Okay. What are the odds of Brittany scoring? Does that help? So, who are you going to pick? I, I, Ellen's the right answer. Ah. Ellen's the right answer. Why is Ellen the right answer? She's more likely to score in, in her shot. Okay, so how are we going to do that? Though? How do you know? Well, right now I'm kind of desperate. Okay. So what are we going to have to do? If I want to get a, a actual number, if I want to put a number to Ellen or a number to Brittany, how am I going to do that? What's the, what are the, what's the chances or the probability that Ellen scores? Eight out of? Eight out of 21. What is the probability that Brittany scores? Eight out of Have we got the right numbers here? No, we don't. So let's look back. These odds are wrong, which makes these probabilities wrong. What's the total number of shots that Ellen took? 13. So what are the odds? 8 to 5, right? Because these have to add up to 13. That's the attempts, right? Brittany, it's 10 to Okay. What are the probabilities? What we added the odds. 8 out of 13. Probability here. Okay, which one's bigger? How do you compare probabilities when you've got uh, 13 70? You divide it out, right? You just get the decimal. So what is 8 divided by 13? 62.4. 62. 62. 62. 62. 62. 62. Oh, 0. 62%. Yeah, so 62%. 0. 0.62. And what's 10 out of 17? 
0 0.59, 59%. They are close, yeah. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's not a one, usually shootouts aren't one thing, right? But she might want uh, Brittany to go first. If this were baseball, it would be statistics up the wazoo, and then they would know that when you're facing a right-handed hitter, and the sun is in this position in the sky, and this person is let off and got a hit, then this will happen. Because, you know, baseball games, you know, if you look at the, anybody ever scored a baseball? Probably not. You guys never even knew how many players there were in baseball. But when you score a baseball game, you've got this big sheet in front of you, Basically, every pitch is recorded, right? So every play that happens, you can recreate a baseball game from the sheet. You know exactly where the ball was hit and whether it was caught, whatever, right? Like everything. So you can recreate all of these if you went through. And so statistically, they can analyze the game up the wazoo, right? And here, um, you might know that, you know, that uh, Ellen's got a better chance of scoring, but it's always happened after Brittany has scored, right? So she scores, but she has a better chance of scoring if Brittany scores first, right? And that, may, that would affect your decision, right? But just going straight by the numbers here, we just go straight by the numbers, right? You just pick. Okay, and we compare. And you can see that, hey, it's not easy comparing odds unless the numbers are the same, right? And it's not easy comparing probabilities uh, unless the denominators are the same. So we need to uh, have a strategy to compare. This is pain. Gotta open this up. So there's probability, so 0 0.62 and 0 0.59. Interpreting odds against making a decision. A group of grade 12 students are holding a charity carnival to support a local animal shelter. The students have created a dice game they call BIM and a card game they call Zap. The odds against winning BIM are 5 to 2, and the odds against winning Zap are 7 to 3. Which game should Madison play? Three, So the odds against BIM winning are 5 to 2. The total number of outcomes is 7. If I play BIM 7 times, I'll likely lose 5 and win 2. Probability winning is 2 out of 7. What's probability winning this guy? 3 out of 3 out of 10, right? Because we've got to add these two together to get the 10. Okay? So odds give you favorable, unfavorable, right? Probability gives you favorable and total. Okay? So it, whether you're looking at odds or probability, you will see the favorable number in there. When you're looking at probability, you're seeing the total, so you have to go total minus favorable to get unfavorable. When you are looking at odds, you're seeing unfavorable, you have to add those together to get total. Okay, so the probability of winning this are 3 out of 10, which is 0.3, and this is 2 out of 7, which is less than points, 0.285714, something. And you can compare those, and, and they do, and here they are, right? So. And next page. Yeah, and there's solutions. And this is just comparisons. I got five to two and I got seven to three. I could make them both sixes, right? And by doing that, I get 15 to six and I get 14 to six. And so I know that the odds against winning are this and the odds against winning are that. And I should play this game because the odds against are less. And there's the key ideas. So odds express a level of confidence about the occurrence of an event. The odds in favor of an event are occurring given by the ratio P of A and P of A prime. So A prime is everything that's not A. Right? Remember that when you see a prime. Okay, we're talking about a set theory, a set of outcomes is split into those that do something and those that don't. And everything has to be there, right? There's nobody lying outside the circle, right? It doesn't do band or acquire. In this case, it's, you know, it's one or the other. You can't, there's, there's nothing lying out. Um, because what that leads to, the probability of A is probably the complement of A, where P of A is 1 minus the probability of A, right? Those two probabilities, something happens, something doesn't, have to add up to 1. So the complement, in, in other words, to calculate a complement, it might be easier to calculate this and go 1 minus it, just the same as we did in counting, right? Where we did counting, and you said, I need at least 2 out of 5. Well, it's easier to calculate the total number and subtract from that 0 or 1, and that will get you the at least 2. Same idea in probabilities. Okay, and then they just uh, go into that. Right? Good enough, huh?